The year is 2001. Gaeka Mendieta has just slotted the winning penalty in the Champions League final and Valencia have been crowned champions of Europe, ushering in a new wave of dominance in European football. Of course, that version of events may well have happened in a parallel universe, but not in this one. Valencia were beaten on penalties thanks to a Mauricio Pellegrino miss and some have suggested it's been downhill ever since for the men from Mestalla. So what's going on in Valencia right now? To understand the problem, we need to go back a little. Of course, I was being a little facetious by suggesting that the Champions League final of 2001 represented the beginning of the end for Valencia. They won the league the following season and again two years later under Rafa Benitez. But since those heady days, fans of Los Che have had just two Copa del Rey titles to write home about. As Rafa Benitez left for Liverpool after that historic UEFA Cup win, Valencia stuttered. They finished seventh in the following season, but despite a few third place finishes since then, they haven't really threatened at the very top of the league. Financial mismanagement followed. During the late 2010s, money was flowing in the city of Valencia like wine at a Roman banquet, so much so that the region eventually went bankrupt. This was a stark sign of things to come for the football club, as they too would experience the same fate under the stewardship of Juan Batista Soler. A poor run of form around 2008 exposed a massive internal debt of around 400 million euros, which resulted in players going weeks without payment. This set the wheels in motion for Soler to eventually sell the club in 2014 to one Peter Lim, a well-known figure in sports investment in the UK. So who exactly is Peter Lim? Well, public enemy number one as far as the Valencia faithful are concerned. The Singaporean is a former stockbroker with a personal wealth of more than $2 billion, with Forbes ranking him as the 10th richest Singaporean in 2009. Most of his fortune was made after a savvy $10 million investment in palm oil company Wilmerball Fruit back in 2010, the proceeds of which he used to pump into English football club Salford City FC, alongside a group of former Manchester United players, such as David Beckham and Nicky Butt. Lim also chose to purchase Valencia, buying 70.4% of the club's shares, which made him the majority shareholder. Initially, fans seemed receptive to Lim's ownership and were hopeful the days of the club shipping out their biggest stars were over. In the short period before Lim's takeover, Valencia produced and sold some of the heaviest hitters in Spanish football, including the likes of David Villa, Juan Mata, David Silva, Roberto Soldado, and others. This was all a byproduct of the financial mismanagement which had plunged the club under Soler, so fans, quite understandably, were cautiously optimistic about what the future might hold for them under Lim. Sadly, the optimism around the place back in 2014 has now completely dissipated, and the city is now a very different place, especially if you happen to be named Peter Lim. How has it ended up going so badly wrong for Lim? Unfortunately for the Valencia board, the relief which engulfed the fanbase when Lim took over nine years ago has now turned into something much more toxic. Considering the mess the club were in when Lim took over, it's actually quite an achievement to have messed up so badly. No matter which direction you turn in the corridors of power, Valencia HQ, in the few seasons before Lim took over, you were met with a scandal. Former presidents trying to kidnap each other, millions of euros in debt and a bank owner stripping the club for everything it was worth. Valencia were the crisis club. You would think Lim's job was simple, and in a lot of ways, it was. Steady the ship and bring some much needed stability. It has been anything but that at the Mestalla. He has faced repeated claims that he simply doesn't care about the club, and it's easy to see why. The man is never there. He is also guilty of some of the most erratic decision-making in the history of the club. Since his tenure began, he's employed and then fired no fewer than 16 managers. 16 in less than nine years. Anyone who thinks you can build stability by using a model employed by Watford is insane. I mean, the warning signs should have been there when Lim decided to hand his mate Gary Neville the Valencia job back in December 2015. He lasted three months before he was sent packing back to England with his tail between his legs. Let's talk more about Lim's scattergun approach to employing managers now. Somewhat surprisingly, Lim's first appointment as Valencia boss was one of his most successful, Nuno Espirito Santo who would later go on to manage Wolves and Tottenham in the Premier League, has the highest winning percentage of any boss during Lim's reign. That is apart from Salvador Voro Gonzalez, who left the dugout with two wins from three games after one of his many caretaker spells. Since Nuno, Lim has largely failed to find any sort of stability in the manager's hot seat. This, of course, breeds discontent in the stands. 
The appointment of Neville, an untested rookie who couldn't speak a word of Spanish, was a disaster. Unfortunately, it was a sign of things to come. Rafa Benitez's former assistant Paco Esteran was up next. He lasted three months too. Voro then took charge for the first of his six spells, a Valencia loyalist who has never shirked the responsibility of keeping the team ticking over whilst a replacement is vetted. Voro is a safe pair of hands but lacks the credentials to be a long-term appointment. Cesar Prandelli was then brought in for 10 games before the relative stability of Marcelino, who managed more than two years, which in Peter Lim's world amounts to something approaching a lifetime. Marcelino left in September 2019, but since then the manager's chair has changed hands on no fewer than eight separate occasions. None of these men have seen more than 50 games, a telling statistic. If Peter Lim expects any manager to turn his team into world beaters in less than 50 games, then he is sadly misinformed. As you might imagine, Lim's busybody approach of interfering in the day-to-day -day and not giving any manager a chance to implement their own style is one which seriously grates on the Valencia fans. Lim's lack of patience isn't the only point of contention with fans though. During his time at the helm of Loche, Lim has also been accused of not investing enough in the team. From the outside looking in, however, this might not be entirely accurate. Of course, every football fan believes their respective board should be investing more in the playing squad. But Lim has actually invested around 500 million euros since his outfit arrived on the east coast of Spain. Now, this might not sound like a lot when compared with Premier League teams, but the English TV deal is the biggest in the world and many other European teams and leagues have simply fallen by the wayside as a result of it. Lim has overseen the transfers of players such as Rodrigo Marino, Jeffrey Condogbia and Simone Zaza, as well as Gonzalo Guedes, who was initially brought in on loan. The problem is, he's also overseen the sale of some of the club's best players due to his own organization's mismanagement. Moreno, Ferran Torres and Dani Parejo have all been sold to try and offset the club's reported debts. Also, it doesn't really matter how many players you bring in when you're going through managers like hotcakes. The fans have also accused Lim of showing limited respect to the history and traditions of the club. Back in 2017, he removed the iconic bat symbol from the club's crest. Ironically, it will now take a rescue mission of Batman-like proportions to salvage his relationship with the club's fans. Fans seem to believe that the time has come for Lim to sell up and leave, and with the outpouring of negativity around the club recently, it's difficult to see him surviving. So, what's happened this season? The summer of 2022 saw yet more upheaval, as Jose Bordalas left his position to be replaced with legendary Italian midfielder Gennaro Gattuso. However, after a bright start which saw the 2004 league winners in the European places two months into the season, the cracks started to appear. Late losses to Sevilla, Mallorca and Barcelona were followed by a brief upturn in form which saw them draw with Sociedad and then beat Betis. What followed next was an abomination. They went more than three months without registering a league win. Yes, there was a World Cup in the middle, but that dire run of form has brought with it the very real possibility of relegation for the first time since the mid-80s. This would surely be unacceptable for a team such as Valencia and its supporters. Of course, in true Peter Lim fashion, Gennaro Gattuso was handed his marching orders after just over six months of the job, and the hunt was on for yet another manager. That came in the form of Valencia stalwart Ruben Baraja, an integral part of that Valencia side of the early 2000s, and the green shoots of recovery have begun to emerge. I mean, it couldn't have gotten much worse. Before their home game on February 12th against Athletic Club, just two days before the appointment of Baraja was announced, fans of the famous old club staged a protest aimed at Lim's handling of the club. They decided they would not be entering the stadium until the 19th minute of the match, a nod to the year the club were founded, 1919. Unfortunately, that meant they missed their side's only goal of the game, a 16th minute strike by Samu Castileo en route to a 2-1 defeat. The message from fans was clear, however. They want Peter Lim out of their club once and for all. Whether that happens remains to be seen. As always, thanks for dropping in on us today and remember to swing by again next time when we will be discussing loads more interesting bits and pieces. And why not do us a big favour by liking and sharing today's video, whilst also subscribing to our channel. Bye guys!